Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, case lexicographical string of all happy strings of length n. So it takes a bit to actually wrap your head around what this problem is asking for, but once you do, I think this is actually a very, very interesting problem. There's so many different solutions to this problem, but I'm actually mainly going to be focusing on only the optimal solution which is basically a linear time solution as opposed to some of the other solutions to this problem, which are more like exponential. I think in terms of difficulty, the optimal one that I'm gonna show you is about honestly as simple as the other ones. Maybe it's a slightly more difficult, but I found it very interesting. It's very, very mathematical. So it's like one of those things where if you're pretty good at math, this problem is gonna be very enjoyable for you. If you're not, if you hate math, you're probably gonna hate this problem, but let's get into it. The idea is that our character set is given to us as a, b, and c. That's not a parameter, that's just hard-coded. Like this is the set of characters that are available to us. We are given two parameters, n and k. So just to run through the first example very quickly, n is basically the number of slots of the string that we're trying to create. So we're trying to create strings of length one. So for a second, let's enumerate all of the possible strings of length one that we could create. Now, there's a couple of rules that we have to follow. First of all, obviously, we can only pick characters from our character set. We can use each of these an unlimited amount of times. So that's not the problem, but there is a couple of restrictions here. So we're dealing with a string of just length one, but imagine if we had multiple spots available to us. We can pick anything we want for the first character. So in terms of like the decision tree, you could see it as this. We could do A or B or C for the first decision that we make. Now, for all of the following decisions, we have to make sure that two adjacent characters are not the same character. They cannot be equal. So you cannot have two consecutive A's, you cannot have two consecutive B's or two consecutive C's. So then the problem becomes, how many choices do we have? Or at least that's the question you should definitely be asking yourself to at least try to build a little bit of intuition to solve this problem. So now from every single one of these, every single one, we're gonna have only two choices available to us. So you could see it as this, like here we have B and C available to us, here we have A and C, and here we have B and A. I don't know why I flipped the positions of these, but anyways. I think it's mostly clear to see that from here, from this decision tree onwards, every single one of these nodes is only gonna have two choices because we started with an A, now we have B, we cannot pick B again, so from our available character set, we kind of remove this from consideration for just a little bit for this step. We remove B and we have these two choices and then it just kind of keeps going like that. So my question to you is how many possible strings could we create given like these rules and if n is some arbitrary value. The first example is a little bit misleading because think about this, like we only have one slot, so either we pick A or we pick B or we pick C. There's three uh, different strings that we could create of length one. But the generic formula for that is a lot easier to derive from this picture. In my opinion, it's pretty straightforward. For you, it might not be, but think about this. If you ignore like the entire tree and you only consider everything below like the first level of the tree, it's basically this, two to the power of n, right? Where n is the height of the tree, but it's probably n minus one because we're kind of skipping that first level. Now we have obviously three of these trees, like these subtrees that I'm talking about. And the reason we have three of them, it's not a coincidence for the first choice that we made, we had three choices. That was just the first choice. And then for the n minus one choices down here, like all this part, we had two characters available to us. So we branched by two every time. First, we branched by three. Long story short, we can say that the formula for the total number of strings that we could generate, a string is just a path from the root all the way down to a leaf, is this. Two to the power of n minus one multiplied by a constant, which is three. The three accounts for the first step. This accounts for everything else. Okay, so that might not necessarily help you solve the problem easily, but I promise you it actually does help you build a little bit of intuition for this. Firstly, they tell us what they actually want us to do in this problem. I should have probably mentioned it earlier, but I think this part was kind of important. Among all of these strings, and now I should actually flip these because it's going to be important now, we are doing this intentionally because what we want to do among all of these strings 
we have one string here, one path, one string here, a second path, one here, a fourth, a fifth here, and a sixth there. If you look at each of these strings, and if I were to uh, draw them over here, I have A, B, then I have A, C, and then I have B, A, and I could just uh, keep listing all of these. There's six of them total. Here's like the first four. And we put these in a specific order because in this problem, they want us among all of the possible strings that we could create. Let me write the last two. There is a C, A, and C, B. So these are the six strings among all six of these. This is the first, this is the second, this is the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth in alphabetical order. What we wanna do is return the kth one. So that's why in the first example, which was a very trivial example, we had A, we had B, and we had C. These are the three strings in order. We wanna return the third one, which is the kth one. So we return C as the output. For uh, this example here, I guess I drew K equals one. If that was the case, then we would end up returning this. Uh, but let's make it more interesting. Let's replace these with two. So I want string of length two, and maybe I want the kth string. If I wanted the first one, I would return this. If this was two, then I'd return this one. If this was three, I'd return this one, and it just kind of keeps going. Okay, so that's pretty much what the question is asking for. So for uh, this drawing here, I'm gonna use this now to show you why this will lead you to the linear time solution. This picture is probably the most important part of everything that I've talked about so far. If you understand this picture, then you're probably good. So with these few pieces that I have before you right now, this is all you really need to get to the optimal solution. This equation here, this character set, these parameters, and this tree. Let me give you a little bit of the intuition. Let's assume that this was three, uh, for example, meaning we're trying to create all strings of length three. So plugging three into the formula over here, we get three times two to three uh, minus one, which is two. So we're gonna have 12 different strings. And that makes sense. If you look here, like I have 12 different arrows. I didn't draw all of the characters out. I don't want to, this uh, to get too messy, but there are 12 leaf nodes here. And let's say that I wanted K equals one. There's something very interesting about this tree. We can partition the tree. So this is kind of the key word here. I don't know if this is like the best word to be using, but that's the best one that comes to my mind. We're going to partition the tree such that at every split, at every junction here, we will split it equally. That's the important part because look how like clean this tree is. It's a full tree. It's complete. We can use that to our advantage. Look at this. I slice the tree from the root like this and like this. Now, how does that help me? I don't know, but I do know this, that the first four strings are gonna be on this side. The next four strings are gonna be over here. The next four strings are gonna be over here. So now you probably see where I'm going with this. If I want one through four, like the first four uh, lexicographical ordered strings, whatever that word is, sorry. If K is between one through four, I'm gonna go here. I, I don't need to search the entire tree. I don't need to go through all possibilities. I am using a very simple heuristic, which is in this case, just a very simple like math thing to tell me which like part of the tree I need to traverse. So if K is one through four, okay, well, I'm gonna go here. If K is five through eight, I'm gonna go here. If K is nine through 12, well, then I'm gonna go there. If K was not in this range, then we would have just returned like an empty string. Now, how did I get this number four? Is four a magic number? No. If you've been following along, you might be able to tell me where I got that number from, but if not, remember the calculation we did over here, that was 12. So I knew that from the root that we have 12 different strings that we could create. For example, if K is equal to one, I know I'm gonna go down this path. When I say that, I don't actually mean we're gonna create a tree or even traverse a tree. We're just saying that we know that for the first character, if we're going down this path, A is going to be the first character here. And now it gets a little bit more tricky because initially when you saw it, our range was the entire tree. We were considering one through 12. We had three choices. So our partition size, we took like the entire range, which uh, was just 12 and we took 12 and we divided it by three. That's how I got four. But now when we go to the next choices, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. So to make this easier, what we're gonna do is have a couple variables. I'm gonna call them low and high. Maybe left or right would be better. I think actually I'm gonna do that. Left and right. 
Initially, we had our left and right as this, 1 and 12. It's kind of like binary search in a way, but we're not actually doing binary search. But this was our initial range. When I went here, this first spot, then I'm going to take my right and update it to be a 4 now. So now I know I'm from 1 through 4. I only have two choices to make now. So if a K is 1 or 2, then I would go down the first path, and then I would have A and B as my characters. If K was 3 or 4, then I'm going to go to the other side, and I'm going to get C as the character. And then depending on like which path we take, we will either update a right to be 2, so we'll have the range 1, 2, or we will have the range 4 and 3. There's a couple more variables I'm going to maintain. I don't know if it's worth like going over those like super in depth right now. This constant here, at least originally it started as four. Right now it will be two because we have two different sides. I'm going to refer to this as the partition size when we get into the code. So just keep that in mind in terms of like implementation details. There's a few things I haven't fully discussed here, but maybe that's something you can implement on your own. I definitely encourage you to try that. But anyways, just to finish up this example now, let's say. Uh, we did end up picking C, and then in that case, we would have updated uh, this would stay 4, this would end up being 3. So now we are over here. And so now if K is equal to 3, we will pick uh, the first character, which I think would be an A. If K was equal to 4, we'd pick the next character, which would be B. So whatever you end up picking, maybe we do A. And what we ultimately end up returning is the actual string that we build. And we know we can stop here once we have iterated n times, because we know that is going to be the height of this tree anyway. So I think that's enough talking. Let's code up this linear time and linear space solution now. So I'm going to start just by having the formula I was talking about. So 3 times 2 to the power of n minus 1. I'm not sure if I need the extra parentheses around here. I don't think I do but I'll uh, put them there anyway, just so you can kind of read what's going on here. And I think they told us that if like this number is bigger than K, meaning we don't even have K different strings that we could generate to begin with, if that's the case, then we could just return an empty string. But I think my solution is gonna handle that anyway, so I'll just go ahead and not put that. The way I'm gonna code this up is slightly clever, and I'm pretty sure that I actually came up with this on my own, almost five years ago now, actually. I feel like I was actually better at leak code back then, but anyways, maybe I've gotten better at making videos. I'm gonna start my result as being an empty string, Alternatively, it would also be fine to do this, and I think I'll probably do this just because it's slightly more efficient, making it a list, and then right at the end, we turn it into a string, just because we, we know that concatenating strings is expensive, so we'd prefer to not do that if we can avoid it. So this is just slightly more efficient in Python. This will take all the substrings here, join them together with this as the delimiter. Since it's empty, it'll just combine all the strings together. Okay, now for the clever part. I'm going to have a string. I could also make this an array, but I'm just not going to. A string, which I'm going to call A, B, C. This is my character set. And I'm going to do a couple really clever things with this to make our code really nice and clean. I'm going to have my boundaries, as I talked about, left and right. It's going to be one and the total happy number, the total number of strings that we could uh, create. And then I'm going to start choosing characters. So I'm going to say for I in range N, I need to pick N different characters. So now is where I'm going to do a couple things. One, I'm going to have my current variable. It's initially going to be uh, not one. It's going to be low. It's going to start probably at one. But anyways, and I'm also going to have the partition size I was talking about. So this is really clean because watch this. I can do high minus low plus one. This just gives me the total number of characters. So if I had like one through 12, what this is doing is 12 minus one plus one. If it was four, it would do four minus one plus one. If it was, let's say maybe five to eight, it would do eight minus five plus one. So it's just going to give us the total number of numbers in that range. And then we can divide this by the number of choices. So this is, I think is slightly clever because initially this is going to be three. But later, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove characters from here. So it's actually going to turn into a string of length two. Another one of the many advantages, I think, of using Python, because you can really make some nice, elegant code. Uh, but anyways, so now that we have that, now is the part where I'm going to do, I guess you could call it polling, because I'm literally just going to be trying every one of the partitions. There's not going to be that many of them. Let's use the example where we had one through 12. So initially, these are going to be my partitions, one through four, five through eight, and then nine through 
12. I'm going to try every one of these ranges and figure out if that's the one I need to go to. So I'm going to do this. For character in the choices that are available to us, initially it's going to be A, B, and C. I'm going to say A is going to be this choice, B is going to be this choice, and C is going to be this choice. How exactly am I going to do that in terms of like implementation? It's not super complicated. I'm going to do this. If K is in this range from a current all the way up until current plus the partition size. So let me be clear with what this code is doing. And I guess I might as well just write it a different way. This is kind of the less Pythonic way of doing it. Cur is less than or equal to K, which is less than current plus the partition size. So these lines of code are pretty much equivalent. I'm just doing this because I think it's Pythonic and a little bit more readable but for non-Python people, maybe the opposite is true. But this is just checking if k is in between current and current plus partition size. This is non-inclusive because what it's going to do first is a current is initially low. It's set to 1. So the first thing that this loop is uh, going to do is check. Is our number k in between 1 and 4? If it's not, then we'll try the next character and we'll check is k in that range. If not, then we'll try the next one. And if k is not in this range, well, then the loop just isn't going to execute, or rather the condition isn't going to execute. Uh, but if it does execute, this is what we're going to do. We're going to, of course, take that character, that choice that we just made, and add it to the result. So I can say result append this character. I can also then update my range, my low and my high, or my left and right variables. Really, really sorry about that. Don't know how I mixed those up, uh, but this should be left, this should be right. Hopefully you understood mostly what I meant. But now we need to update those left and right variables. It's not super difficult how to do that because what our current value was, it was always at the lower bound of the range that we were looking at. So when we were at the first one, we were at one. So we were looking from one up until four. Then we possibly increment this by the partition size, which I guess I could just add that line now that I mentioned it. So current, we're going to add to it, uh, it this, the partition size. That's only if we did not execute this if statement. If we execute the if statement, then we can just break out of the loop entirely. But to actually update the low or the left and the right, left is just going to be set to whatever current was because that is the range that we left off at. That was the partition. Right is just going to be cur plus partition size. Make sure to add the minus one though. And this is probably like the clever part. We can update our choices as well. We're going to do that like this in Python. We take the string a, b, c, what the original string was, and we will remove the character, or in Python we will call replace, on the character that we just chose. This character that we just chose, remove that from a, b, c. So this character, remove it or replace it with the empty string. So initially, we started with three choices, A, B, C. After we pick one, the string will be updated to something like this, maybe, a B, C. And then our choices will just be B and C. And then, I suppose like we picked B, we would take this string, A, B, C, not the uh, current variable, but this hard-coded string, and we will remove, I uh, suppose, B from it. So we will get rid of the B, and then we'll have A, C left over, which will then be assigned to this. So that's like the clever part. But other than that, I think this solution is mostly pretty reasonable other than maybe like the math stuff and let me uh, make sure everything looks good before we try to run this so here is the final code and here you can see it works and it does look pretty damn efficient this time around if you found this helpful check out neatcode.io for a lot more i'm recording this here on valentine's day for you guys as you can see thanks for watching i'll see you soon